Are box turtles the best pet reptile to own? Are they even the best turtle species to own? Today I'm going to try to answer those questions for you. My name is Pierce LaValle, this is Pierce's Planet, stick around. Yo, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to my channel. I'm sorry it's been so long since I filmed a video. Life has just been hectic right now. I just went back to work. I had to help set up and get everything going over there. And I had school finals I had to do. And you know, just, just a lot of crazy things, a lot of different things that I've been doing. I've been super busy. But I think things are starting to die down a little bit for me, so I think I'm going to be able to start getting back to the videos a lot more. Let's get into the topic of the day, which is box turtles. So this is Franklin, my three-toed box turtle. And yes, he is named, all, all my 90s babies out there, he is named after the children's book or the TV show, if you ever watch the TV show, Franklin the Turtle. I've had Franklin since I was about four or five years old. He's about 20 to 22 years old. A really old turtle, I've had him forever. He was my first pet I ever got. He was the first pet I ever got. And you know, you might think that a turtle would be a great first pet. I'm here to tell you it's not. Turtles are really difficult pets to keep for beginners. It's more of an intermediate pet. I'm not gonna say it's the hardest pet in the world. If you know what you're doing, you can have turtles and they can thrive and they are, can, they are just wonderful pets. But they have a lot of care requirements. I didn't know about all these care requirements when I was younger. Um, I was a little bit more naive. I, I was a kid, you know, my parents, I had to basically rely on my parents to kind of do the research for me when I was younger like that. And then as I got older, I had to do my own research. But for the most part, I really didn't know what I was getting into and I didn't even know how to take care of this turtle. And so I made a whole bunch of mistakes and I will explain those to you and tell you basically what not to do when caring with your turtle and what I did to change those things. So I'm not gonna hold Franklin for too long throughout this video because as you can see, he's, he's pretty stressed out. So I'm gonna put him down here in a second. But I did just want you guys to get a good look at him so you guys can see what a box turtle looks like. So one of the first mistakes that I made when I got Franklin and I first started keeping him was I treated him like he was a desert species. I thought that any turtle with you know feet instead of flippers was a desert species and I was getting them mixed in with tortoises and so that's one of the first things you want to do is you want to distinguish do you have a turtle do you have a tortoise and the basic rule of thumb you know I'm not going to say for everybody because obviously I got mixed up with it but the basic rule of thumb is tortoises do spend time on, on land and turtles tend to be more aquatic and spend their time in more moist environments near some water. There's a lot of ways that you can, you know, you can kind of tell the difference between a tortoise and a turtle, but tortoises are gonna be your more desert species. Turtles are gonna be the ones that are gonna be living in, you know, near wetlands. So when I got Franklin, I treated him like he was a desert tortoise and I put him on a sand substrate and, and, and cranked up his heat really hot. And that is, that's just not good. It's just, it could have, I could have easily killed my turtle by doing that. With box turtles, their heat is gonna, you're gonna want that to be around 85 to 90 degrees. Okay, that's what their basking spot is gonna be. And then on the lower side, it can drop down to as low as 70 degrees. These are a North American species of turtle, which means they are very hardy and they can handle drastic weather changes. Not saying you're gonna put your, you know, you're gonna you're gonna turn down the heat to when in the middle of winter, so that's only 50 degrees, but they can handle a drop into the 60s. Their humidity is going to be around 60 to 70 percent. I believe three-toed box turtles are from the the southern the 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 southeastern part of the United States, like Florida and that area. Um, so they do have a little bit of a of a, of a high humidity 
humidity requirement, but not too bad. I miss, I miss Franklin here about once a day and that seems to do the trick for him. So you can miss more or less depending on what your gauges say and everything. But once a day for me has worked. Sorry about that, buddy. I didn't mean to scare you. Once a day for me has worked and, and it's done, done him very well. So by treating Franklin as a desert species for a good chunk of his life, uh, the beginning of his life, I did some damage to his shell. And I'll try to put some clips in here so you guys can see what that looks like. It's not the worst looking shell in the world, but it does have some damage done to it and it doesn't, it's not the healthiest either. So it was pretty much irreversible after the damage was done, but all I could do after that was try to help it heal and try to help it get better. I just have to be extra careful now by the way I treat Franklin's shell to make sure that it, that it, you know, it doesn't get like that again. I also wasn't misting him every day. So his cage was completely dry for the majority for the, for the most part, and the only way he could get some moisture was by going into his water dish. So that's something you wanna completely avoid. These turtles like humidity. They like it being humid, they like it wet. Um, not soaking, but they do like that moisture. UVB lights are highly important for a healthy turtle and a healthy turtle shell, which is something that I did not have on my turtle's enclosure for probably the first three quarters of my turtle's life. And just recently I started using one and I currently don't have one on there now because I ran out of outlets to use and so I still got to go get another extender and I just I just haven't done it yet but that is another thing that you need to have is UV light and if you don't have UV light uh, what you need to do is take your turtle out for a couple of hours a day put them in your backyard let them roam around get some of that some of that natural sunlight to, to make sure that their shell is de developing correctly. Luckily for me, that is something that I did anyways. Uh, when I was living at my mom's house or at my dad's house, I would let my turtle go in their backyard and kind of free roam and get some natural sunlight. It wasn't every day with like it should have been, but I did do that quite often. Another thing that I was not expecting when I first got a box turtle is the fact that they need Quite a, quite a decent sized enclosure. I mean, for their size, they need uh, uh, as much room as you could possibly give them, basically. This is really embarrassing that I, that I would even say this, but up to about a year ago, I had Franklin in a, a 20, gallon, 20 gallon enclosure, all glass enclosure. And the problem with all glass with turtles is that they will, they don't have they don't have that sense of there's a glass there so they will keep walking and ramming themselves into that glass i wish i had a picture of what i had him in before it's just horrible it, it's it's not good i i had no clue what i was doing and i didn't learn until later on that what i was doing is wrong and so luckily all i could do was just correct it and so I, that's what i did 20 gallons is super super small for a turtle. If you see what I have Franklin in now, it's about a 55 to 75 gallon Rubbermaid tub and he has plenty of room to roam. Ideally, if you live in the right areas, you wanna ideally put your box turtle in your backyard and just give them a whole a whole space in your backyard to roam. It will thrive out there. If, if, if you live in a warmer climate, you know, when, and once you get up north and it gets colder, um, it's probably not a good idea. Here in California, when I get a house or, you know, when I get a yard where I can put Franklin, I will in the summers and then in the winters, I'll probably bring him back into his Rubbermaid tub. They are a burrowing species, so they like to burrow down into the ground and, and hide. So make sure that your substrate, make sure that you have a lot of substrate to where they can dig and they can, and they can get that enrichment of, of digging like it's their natural environment. As you can see, as far as handling goes, I mean, box turtles are like the perfect size to, to be handled. They don't like being handled though. Um, it can really stress them out very easily. Uh, Franklin's already kind of past his limit of being handled already, but they are the perfect size for like a child to hold for short periods of time. Even though they have the shell, they are delicate. If you drop a turtle, you know, from a decent height, only a couple feet and crack that shell, you could kill it. So just be aware of that. Be careful of that they're not indestructible just because they have shells. They're not gonna bite you. They're gonna be, they're very, very, very friendly. 
so they're not gonna bite you and even if they did you know a bite might it might hurt a little bit but it's not gonna be anything too serious they do have long necks so watch out if, if you do get a cranky one Franklin's never bit me and I actually and actually I don't even know if Franklin is a male or female and I think I'm, I'm leaning to more towards that it's actually Franklin's actually a girl and a female uh, based off the color of, of the eyes and the way the shell underneath that's how you can tell the sh uh, underneath the shell um, is so I, I have a feeling that Franklin is a female but I'm not too 100, I'm not 100 percent sure I, I don't know for sure turtles have these beaks that which I also didn't know they have these beaks he actually just got his shaved down and I didn't know that you could shave them down or that you should shave them down so his kind of grew out to be kind of long so in their in their enclosure you're gonna want to put things like rocks and stuff like that where you put their food on so that they could rub that beak up against those and kind of shave that down themselves so you don't have to keep going to the vet to shave it down and then also their nails you want to cut their nails because their nails do get very 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 long box turtle diet these guys eat everything they're omnivores and they eat pretty much anything you will give them it's probably easier to list things that they can't eat uh, instead of things that they can eat because they will pretty much eat everything uh, dark leafy greens are what you want to be uh, what you want their main staple diet to be and that was another mistake that I made was that I was giving my turtle I was giving Franklin lettuce iceberg lettuce to a to a box turtle isn't nutritious at all and so that also had to do with with that shell kind of deteriorating over time um, so you want to make sure that you're giving them dark leafy greens like collard greens and kale um, and and mustard greens things like that um, to give them that nutrition that they need you also want to mix carrots in there broccoli zucchini pretty much any vegetable you can think of um, and then then also fruits fruits not so much because of the sugar content but you know uh, bananas Franklin loves bananas strawberries blueberries grapes things like that and then they also do like some protein in their diet so I've heard of some people giving their box turtles cat food like wet cat food I don't do that for Franklin I give him insects so I, I will give him super worms dubia roaches mealworms the occasional cricket or two if i have it on tongs so he because he's not gonna be able to chase them and catch them a really varied diet is is key for a box turtle they eat a lot and they eat often so i feed franklin every other day and one day i might give him all dubia roaches the next day i might give him collard greens with strawberries the day after that i might give them bananas another day i might give them just straight super worms i try to mix it up as much as possible the uh, vegetables and the dark leafy greens are going to be the staple that's going to be like 75 percent of their diet everything else will fall in after that that can be a con for some people because you're going to have to be buying fresh produce and you're going to need to go to the store often and make sure you you keep up on your insects and your vegetables and fruit they also sell uh, box turtle dry food. I don't recommend giving them that all the time, but that does work if you need to go on a trip or something and you know someone's watching the turtle for you or maybe you don't have anybody watching the turtle for you, you just put some of that food in there so that they can have that. But I wouldn't like use that as a staple diet. So this is the dry food that I give Franklin and this is pretty much only for emergencies so if i have to be gone for a night or if i'm gone for you know a couple days then i'll put this in there because it lasts and it's not going to like decompose like the vegetables and fruit will and you put this in there and it'll last a couple days and i can go you know on a on a weekend trip or whatever and not have to worry about feeding because he'll have this in there but that's really the only time I ever use it or if I you know haven't had time to go to the store and I don't have any vegetables or fruit or anything like that and and this is like a last resort type of thing I'll use this stuff so right there you can get this at pretty much any pet store not recommended but you can so I wouldn't I wouldn't consider box turtles necessarily available you can find them in certain pet stores I've 
never really seen any in like a Petco or PetSmart type of type of pet store. But if you're going to like a reptile specialty store or something like that, you might find them. There's different um, localities. There's different like subspecies of box turtles. Franklin is a three-toed box turtle because he has three toes. So, <laughs> cool. Not three toes altogether. Three toes on each foot. <laughs> um, on his back feet. There's like ornate box turtles. I think there's like Chinese box turtles. There's just there's 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 a Eastern box turtles. There's a bunch of different box turtle subspecies, and they might have specific care requirements to that subspecies. This will kind of cover encompass most box turtle species. So as far as their water goes, box turtles are different than their aquatic cousins because they don't actually live majority of their life in the water. Majority of their life they're living on land and they aren't the strongest swimmers. So you want a shallow water dish that your turtle can go into and soak. And with their feet still touching the ground and their head still being able to reach above the water, you want the water to try to cover as much of the shell as possible because their head can lift above the shell and you don't want to go any deeper than that because they aren't strong swimmers and they could possibly there is the potential of them drowning so make sure you keep your water dish shallow they love to soak they'll they'll spend you know maybe an hour or two of each day soaking in their water dish and then they'll go out on the land and they'll go into their little hide or their their burrow so as far as substrate goes i already told you guys i kind of fucked up excuse my french for um with Franklin because I treated him as a desert species and so he was on like crushed walnuts and sand for like most majority of his life and it wasn't until recently that I switched and for box turtles they would like soil or like cypress mulch something that they can dig into and soil would be is preferable for the turtle not preferable for your cleaning because your water dish you'll be cleaning that water dish out daily maybe even twice to three times a day trust me when i switched him over to soil it was not fun i was cleaning that water dish out two times a day because every time he would go in there he would just put dirt all in it so i eventually switched him over to bark and that seemed to work out great. He's been able to dig and still uh, burrow into the bark, but it's not as messy. When I, when I clean his cage out and kind of do a redo of his enclosure, I'm going to mix in like cypress mulch with soil, just so it, you know the, his, his hides will, and his burrows will hold a little bit better and give him more of that natural feel, um, but also not be as dirty as what it is when it's just soil. But overall, box turtles are not messy pets. They actually are pretty clean because they usually only poop in their water. So it makes for an easy clean and you don't really have to worry about going around and picking up poop like a bearded dragon or something like that. That's just super messy and smelly. I know I talked a lot today about, you know, how I messed up with Franklin and how I messed up his care and how, you know, I, I I think that box turtles are a pretty difficult species to, to deal with as a beginner, but I don't want that to dis discourage some people because they are great pets. And even if you're a beginner, yeah, that was, Franklin was my first pet and I made a lot of mistakes and I didn't have videos like this because there was no YouTube at the time. Damn, I'm old. There wasn't even Google. I couldn't even Google the answers to some of this stuff. I didn't have the like resources like this to, to correct myself until later on and once I got those resources then I started to correct myself but I don't want to discourage you if you watch this video and you were watching some other videos and doing some research and you and you feel that you can handle the responsibility of a box turtle I say go for it 100% I do think though that they are the best turtle species that you can own um, if you're if you want to get start getting into tor turtles and tortoises I would, I would put box turtles in the top three of best beginners. With most turtles, they're gonna be like mostly aquatic. So you're gonna need these big water features and these big cages with these big water features to make sure you, you, you're taking care of them right. Box turtles, they don't need that. They need more of the land space and just a little bit of a water feature, but that's not too deep. Um, they're a lot more interactive. You can kind of handle them a little bit more. So for a beginner, for, for turtles and for tortoises, 
I do think box turtles are should be you know one of the first first pet turtles that you that you end up getting. So that is it, you guys. Are box turtles the the, the best reptile that you can own, or the easiest reptile you can own? I don't think so. Personally, I, I don't think they are. I think there's a lot of other options that you could that you could have if you're beginning or or somebody who's just starting to get get your feet wet in the in the reptile hobby. But are they the best turtle species? Are they the best tortoise species? I believe so, especially for beginners. I think that if you if you want to start getting into turtles and tortoises and kind of learning their behaviors, I think box turtles are where you should start. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm sorry it took me so long to make a new one. Life's just been, it's been pretty hectic. But I plan on making some more videos for you guys. My next video, I got a surprise for you guys and that should be coming out soon. So stay tuned for that. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that comment section up, and please make sure you share this video. Bring some people over here. Let's start a conversation. Until next time, everybody, my name is Pierce LaValle. This is Pierce's Planet. And remember, it's all about the reps, baby. Peace. Are you alright buddy? You're okay. You're alright. You're alright. You're alright. Hey, what's wrong with you? You you're taking care of them right. Box turtles, they don't need that. They only I it's only been like two or three weeks, but it's feel like it's it, blah, 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 blah. So make sure you keep your your box turtle. If you can see, I'll try to put some clips of his shell in here. His sh God damn it, what the fuck, dude? That was something that was pretty much, you know, irreversible. I, I was able to, oh, being him as a desert species, I also wasn't, God damn it, a good portion of Frank. Oh my God, dude, is this what it's gonna be like?